Welcome back to Loose Talk. As you can see and hear, we're now getting underway the first full night of this Republican nominating convention for Mitt Romney here in Tampa, Central Florida. Like all presidential conventions, this is essentially um, a three-day advertisement for the nominee for their party. And Mitt Romney, um, more than most nominees, has really got to use this moment to sell himself, introduce himself uh, to the American people. He remains not only not very well known among voters, but according to the personal approval ratings, not very well liked by those who do know him. Uh, it's a three-part event. The first night, tonight, is based on the theme, We Built It, which, are, which is a reaction um, to remarks that Barack Obama made a few weeks ago, in which he said that government built the kinds of things like roads um, and other infrastructure that enable entrepreneurs and small businesses to thrive. Now, if a guy walked into a bar and heard that story and he said, well, if you've got a business, you didn't build that. Well, you know what we do with him, don't you? We throw him out. The second night, Wednesday night, when Paul Ryan, the running mate, will introduce himself, um, is based around the theme, We Can Do Better, which is self-explanatory. Uh, and the final night, Mitt Romney's big night, where, as I say, he is introducing himself or reintroducing himself to the American people, uh, is on the theme, Believe in America. And again, that's very much an implicit jab at Barack Obama, who allegedly doesn't believe in America. The theme running through all of this is the notion that Barack Obama is essentially a socialist president who, through his reckless spending, is bankrupting America. And here we have behind me uh, two clocks. One which shows the amount of debt added since this convention began, which is a little bit more than $3 billion, as you can see. And then the other, which is the total national debt, which is approaching $16 trillion. Tonight we are speaking up for ourselves and stepping up. Tonight we're beginning to do what is right and what is necessary to make America great again. This is our future. These are our children and grandchildren. You can trust Mint. Well, it's now the end of the first very long day of this convention. So the first third of this convention is already over. And as you can probably gather, delegates are streaming out of the convention hall and back to their hotels. And there were really three things that struck me um, as an observer here um, today. The first was the degree to which the party, as it has done before, but I think even more so on this occasion, selected non-white speakers to appear on the stage, whether it was Nikki Haley, the Indian American governor of um, South Carolina, um, whether it was a former Democratic congressman and African American, Arturo Davis, who switched to the Republican Party, or whether it was the Hispanic First Lady of Puerto Rico. There was a very conscious, um, as I say, time-honored effort to get non-whites out on the stage. And that's worth emphasizing, because of course it is overwhelmingly a white party. And anybody who's here walking around the convention um, today and tomorrow doubtless as well would notice it's 99% white. The second was that Chris Christie, the barnstorming, larger than life um, Republican governor of, of New Jersey who concluded, it was a set piece speech today, who concluded the first day of the convention, um, really summarized what is, I think is the core critique of Obama, that he is presiding over America's decline. Chris Christie said, I don't want my children and grandchildren to read in the history books about what it was like to live in the American century. I want them to live in a second American century. Finally, and most importantly, was the most awaited portion of the first day, and that was the speech by Anne Romney, um, the prospective next first lady um, of the United States. Um, and that the person with the very difficult task, some would say impossible, of humanizing uh, Mitt Romney. Uh, now, she very clearly sought to do that with her speech. Um, uh, there will be mixed reactions as to how effective she was. Um, and she also um, very clearly sought to go for the female vote. There's a huge deficit on the women's vote between Democrats and Republicans. Again, in terms of the 
quality of her rhetoric, her oratory, not particularly high. There were lines such as, I love women, which were a little bit crude perhaps, but it was clear what she was aiming at. But it was actually quite, at the end of the day, quite a touching speech from a nervous, inexperienced speaker. And I suspect it will have probably gone down quite well with viewers. Better perhaps than her husband might go down when he speaks on Thursday night at the conclusion um, of this convention. See you tomorrow at the end of day two um, on Loose Talk.